Welcome to this month's Fit for Colorado Talk to the Doc Chat. I'm CBS4 anchor and health reporter Kathy Walsh. For the next half hour, we'll be chatting about fitness and health issues here on CBS4Denver.com. Throughout this chat, we encourage you to ask questions by simply typing them in the chat window at right, and we will do our best to answer those questions. In today's chat, we're going to discuss colorectal cancer. It is the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths here in the United States. In 2008, there were about 150,000 new cases and 50,000 deaths. It affects men and women equally with a higher incidence in African Americans. Colorado saw about 1,800 new cases last year and 660 deaths. The good news, the incidence and death rate have been decreasing. Well, joining me today is Dr. Tom Trio, gastroenterologist at Presbyterian St. Luke's Medical Center, and Kim Gorman, registered dietitian and weight management program director of the Center for Human Nutrition, UC Denver. Dr. Trio, let's start with a graphic and please give us an anatomy lesson of the colon. Let's okay. take a look. Well, what you see is a cartoon of the uh, abdominal. Uh, area and this is the colon. It's about six feet in length and it starts at the bottom where the anus and the rectum and then it continues up. On the left side it goes up towards uh, the area what we call the splenic flexure then it goes across the abdomen and then down into the right lower quadrant where it connects with the small intestine. And its function? Its function is mainly to uh, take fluid out of the um, uh, to preserve fluid so that you don't get dehydrated and it is a uh, um, something that you then uh, can excrete the stool. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so when we talk about colorectal cancer, mm -hmm. what are the risk factors that we're talking about? I feel like we hear more and more about this these days. Yes. Who is it in danger, in most danger, of getting colorectal, mm -hmm. colorectal cancer? Well, on the graphic, you have a, quite a long list of different things. Um, the first thing is age. 90% of colon cancers are diagnosed after the age of 50. So we identify that as you get older, your risk for colon cancer increases. And that and it really, although it's unusual, we do see patients with colon cancer uh, in younger age groups as well. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing in terms of risk factors, personal history of colon polyps and colon cancer, a family history of colon polyps and cancer, inflammatory bowel disease, which mm -hmm. is ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease sure. are other risk factors. African Americans have a higher risk of colon cancer compared to Caucasians and Hispanics. Mm -hmm. um, other risk factors include obesity, cigarette smoking, excessive alcohol, a sedentary lifestyle, a diet high in red meat and fat, as well as patients with type 2 diabetes are at a higher risk. Mm -hmm. So Kim, do those factors on the right surprise you? you no, know, I'm not surprised there and I'm happy to see, uh, you know, the preventable things that you can do. It's not like age, we're not going to stop that age and, and the genetics are the genetics, but there are some some potential for us to take some action. So personally. tell me about those. That That is your venue. Go ahead. So looking at a sedentary lifestyle, looking at your overall diet, you know, we, we're trying to get folks to really increase the amount of fruits and vegetables in their diet, increase the fiber in their diet, but do it consistently. And I think that piece can be a little tricky for folks. Mm -hmm. What is it about red meat? So one day you hear you should have some, it's good, you need iron. The other day, no, 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 it can cause problems like this. You know, red meat is kind of interesting. I don't know that they've identified which piece of it is uh, causing the issue, but when, as I read a little further, they want to limit red meat. Well, the limit is 18 ounces per week. Wow, that's a lot of red meat. That's it? a lot of red mm -hmm. meat, and I think what it is, when you look at ordering a steak, you're not getting a four-ounce steak. So when you're throwing the red meat in there, which would include the lamb and the pork, when you're getting it, we're getting very large portion sizes. We're not sticking to a three-ounce portion. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you try to suggest to people in terms of what they need to eat? You know, regularity is probably number one, and that's going to come with an adequate amount of fiber coming in routinely. And so I would say, you know what, the easiest way to approach it is to find a cereal that you really enjoy, whether you want to do it for breakfast, you want to do it as a snack, and the evening but it's one that's that's you can actually get 10 to 15 grams of fiber in a small bowl of cereal and if you're doing that on a daily basis and it's introduced very gradually you have adequate fluid in your diet you'll see that your evacuation process is very routine you have less waste sitting in that in that colon lining all right doctor let's go back to a little bit on, more on this particular cancer we keep using the term polyp yes what is a polyp yes a polyp is an abnormal growth in the lining of the colon and so what we're trying to do by 
identifying these polyps is you're trying to get to the precursor to what will develop into a colon cancer. So there are different types of polyps. Uh, the adenomatous polyp are the precancerous polyps. And on the left side of the image there, you see a cartoon of a polyp that can form. And then on the right side, you see actually from a colonoscopy, a polyp. And this polyp is what we call a pedunculated polyp. It's on a stalk. And there are different shapes to the polyps. There's ones that are on a stalk that you can remove. There are ones that are flat. The, recently in the press, there was a discussion about flat lesions. And you can understand that if you're trying to do, say, an imaging study in terms of screening, you may miss a flat one. And that's where a colonoscopy or actually imaging uh, with a colonoscopy, you're going to see those flat lesions easier. Right. The adenomatous polyps, about two-thirds of the time is what we find. And those are the ones we really try to uh, go after. If you're looking at uh, someone's age, at the age of 50, you have about a 25% chance of having an adenomatous polyp. And that goes up from there. By the age of 70, you have a 40% chance of having an adenomatous polyp. And what causes the growth of these? Well, it's probably a number of factors. One is these are, uh, it's a series of things that occur over a number of years. There's a transition from a polyp, going from a small polyp to a large polyp to actually a cancer. Mm -hmm. And that evolution is probably over eight to 10 years. And environmental factors, exposure to nitrosamines and, and different uh, toxins that are in uh, things like barbecue or tobacco smoke, uh -huh. those are some of the things we worry about. And what we find is there's also a genetic susceptibility. So that's where there's uh, families that are at risk for colon cancer at a very young age. And, and we think those have to do with, we've identified genetic mutations, and that's what puts them at risk for developing colon cancer. And Kim, I think we mentioned